everyone. This is Will with the Inside Infinity Podcast, bringing you a very special podcast today. It's a very special podcast with a lot of very special people. Uh, this is episode number 40, and uh, yeah, I think it's time for uh, the Avengers to assemble. We have a great show ahead of everyone tonight. <laughs> you guys like that little, that little smooth <laughs> intro. Um First up on the list of special guests tonight, we have uh, Caesar, who is coming from the InsideActionFigure.com. No, dang, ActionFigureInsider.com. <laughs> it's because our names are kind of similar. So uh, Caesar was actually at the event for us this week, or not this week, today. And uh, yeah, you you were tweeting like a madman and... Uh, Given us lots of fun info while uh, while you're there, so welcome, Caesar. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. A <clears throat> long time listener, first time guest. Awesome. Well, we are so happy to have you. And uh, yeah, you've you've reached out to us on Twitter every once in a while, and so it's nice to see. Uh, nice to actually see you in person and see you as a part of the show. So thank you for coming, and we can't wait to hear uh, about your experiences today. Next up, we have uh, Jason Haynes, the the co-host, and or shall I call him Loki today? <laughs> he looks so angry. No, <laughs> oh, I am. Look at the smile. G'day, guys. G'day, listeners. <laughs> I'll move looks, my. I'll be taking my helmet off soon because it's a sore neck. It yeah, it looks kind of heavy, is it? Yeah, really heavy. I don't know. For all you Marvel nerds out there, uh, what's uh, Loki's helmet made of? Because I sure as heck don't know. Is it Majon? I can't even say it. Is it like what Thor's hammer's made of? Who knows? Yolnir? Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> pulling me out of that fire. Uh, I think that was our good friend uh, Pirate Spidey, or Spidey Pirate. Hello, Will. No. How's it going? <laughs> good. Oh, <laughs> what, uh, what, what are you doing? You look, you look like... Uh, you look I'm, pretty, just hanging, look... I'm just hanging around. Are you? <laughs> are you hanging around? <laughs> That's an awesome get-up you got there. I was just surfing the web, and I just uh, saw the Inside Infinity um, podcast was about to start, so I swung on by. Well, we are happy to... I see. That was... uh, How many Spider-Man puns can you throw in there in one sentence? I I don't know. I'm looking them up on the internet as you speak. (laughs) So can you explain the pirate hat? Uh, I've never seen Spider-Man with a pirate hat before. Who wouldn't want to be a a pirate, honestly? I mean... That's uh, true. I mean, sure, you could get anybody can get bit by a radioactive spider, but I mean, to be a real pirate, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta wear the hat. You gotta wear the hat. Well, uh, welcome. We are glad to see you, pirate Spidey. <laughs> it's gonna be so hard to say. Next up on the list, our good friend from VileMationKingdom.com, Travis. How are you doing tonight, Travis? I'm doing well, thank you. Or shall I call you Thor? Thor, a, as a, see. <laughs> you have the hammer and I have everything. Hammer, yeah. Yeah, That's I'm a geek awesome. of epic proportions. Why not? So I love it. I see. Uh, I see your all your other epic Marvel content back there. You have the Hulk. You have a, a Modok figure. Oh yeah, the... yeah. I decorated for the event. Yep. Awesome. For the announcement. Yep. Well, you've been a busy man today too, haven't you? Oh God, you have no idea. So probably since I got up this morning, people were texting me, and we had uh, about I would say about a dozen of our uh, listeners. Uh, at the event, so they were tweeting me and texting me and messaging me about going, and uh, and it was just it was been a crazy day, and it's still going on uh, well into the evening. So. Awesome, uh, and and I uh, forgot to mention uh, Pirate Steve is coming from us from the Disney Infinity Fans Forum, uh, the awesome fan forum group there. <laughs> I, I plugged everyone else's uh, site, and uh, actually. We are working on uh, kind of some collaboration with the the forum, so I, I definitely want to uh, want to mention them. So, with that, folks, uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight. So let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, first off, I just want to say hello and welcome to everyone in the chat room. I think we're uh, breaking a record for the amount of people we have on chat this week. Uh, lots of familiar faces, lots of new faces. So hello, everyone in the chat room. If you want to chat with us live every episode, you can do that. We normally record Monday evenings uh, at 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can do that at InsideDisneyInfinity.com. We are always uh, chatting with the, the chat room. We had a group, a good group there actually live during the event today, so it's kind of fun hanging out with everyone. So, hello, chat room. Uh, 
So yeah, today is a big day. It's April 30th, 2014, which was the big Marvel Disney Infinity 2.0 announcement. And so we're pretty much throwing the, the format of our show out the window today, and we are going to do nothing but Marvel Infinity talk and, and talk a lot about the event. And uh, yeah, everything else that we we have seen and heard and kind of picked through so with that I think uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get things started so first off before we get into uh, any specific Caesar do you just want to tell us a little bit about how your day went kind of what what happened throughout the day um sure yeah uh, yeah so uh, I was gonna I was gonna make a joke but I won't um, <laughs> so I yeah, I got there and I checked in and uh, uh, it was a media check-in and I went in and they had a little breakfast for everybody and that was nice. Uh, I tweeted you a picture of a donut tree that they had uh, for media. And then um, we went in, we got seated in the Cinerama Dome, which is a famous uh, theater in uh, Hollywood and it has this huge screen and it's a really cool uh, old theater, um, modern theater. and. Um, they were playing, they were looping this little Disney Infinity video, and then suddenly, uh, unexpectedly, Samuel L. Jackson showed up, and um, and that's when things got started, and that's when I think, that's when I knew things were going to be real, you know, like, it, I was okay. I was surprised by that, and and, uh, and it was very clear that it was just going to be Marvel stuff, and, um, and I mean, it was really cool, I mean, they brought out Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson, and and then everybody did their announcements, and it was just fun taking it all in and, and being surprised. Um, once it became clear that it was just going to be Marvel, I, I was a little disappointed because I want to know what's the bigger picture, like what's mm -hmm. everything that's going to happen. But um, and it, they didn't even announce all of the Marvel stuff. So right. So um, that that was that was interesting. But I mean, it was fun to be there, fun to get to see the the figures um, before they come out. I, I'm I really want those figures. I think they really they look really nice. I'm yeah. very excited for those. So it was great to be able to see them in person, and, uh, and I can't wait till they come out. Well, I, I totally agree with you. The figures look awesome. And if uh, if the guest list was not an indication on uh, how big Disney and Marvel are taking Infinity 2.0 seriously, I, like you, I could not believe that. Uh, Mr. Jackson himself, uh, Nick Fury, actually opened the show with a pre-recorded message, which that was awesome. Um, what what does the rest of the group? What do you guys think of uh, uh, Director Fury opening the show like that? Me, I'll go. I mean, that was good to have them at the event. Yeah, star power. Is that what you said? Yeah. Agreed, Travis. What do you think? I knew beforehand, um, because they announced it, that Clark would be there. Um, mm -hmm. So, And I thought maybe he would be, like, the big star. I mean, he's, he's on the, the TV series. Right. And a lot of the movie stars are, like, too big to be a part of that event. But the fact that they got Samuel L. Jackson to be in there, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, well, yeah, this is legit. This is great. And mm -hmm. um, I, I saw him as, a playable char uh, as possibly a playable character. I'm hoping that since he's he did the promo, that he'll actually be voicing um, Nick Fury in some respect in the show, in the in the game. So that would be cool. That that would be cool, but I, I doubt it because it looks like they're using a lot of the voice actors from the cartoon. Is that is that what some of the other characters sounded like? Well, no, the yeah. Char no, go ahead. Yeah, like the Iron Man was that was that sounded like Adrian Pazdar, who does the voice of Iron Man for. Uh, Avengers Assemble. Okay. Uh, well, so outside of uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Nick Fury, aka Nick Fury, uh, having Clark Gregg there be actually live on stage—that's pretty. That's a pretty big deal, and and that was kind of like my first outside of um, the already obvious Marvel presence. That was kind of my first indication that, wow, this is this is big, and it's even going outside of the Avenger. Uh, a little bit of the Avenger stuff because yes, Agent Coulson has been in uh, previous movies, but now he's kind of known for the Agents of Shield series and and having him like an active movie or 
movie star, but also uh, TV personality being being live at this event was a pretty big deal, I think. Cool. Um, all right, folks. Well, let's. Uh, thanks, Caesar. Thanks for telling us about that. Uh, we're all really jealous, and uh, we'll be pulling up photos that you took because you did take a lot of photos throughout the uh, throughout the event. So first off, uh, they kind of ran or started the show off showing. Uh, they introduced Disney a little bit, and they discussed how well it Disney Infinity is doing compared to its competition, saying, quoting uh, MPD numbers that they've outsold their competition, and uh, if one would speculate, the their only competition in this uh, physical. I forgot what the the new buzzword they said. This physical it, toy inter space. interactive gaming. Yes, interactive gaming. So that's got to be Skylanders, right? That, that they're, yeah, I mean that's the only other real, real name in the game, and so the fact that uh, they kind of publicly said, "Hey, for being the new kid on the block, we're uh, we're kind of run the show." That was a pretty cool thing. Well, didn't they also kind of hint at the fact that they originated the, the jump mechanism, and then yeah. Skylanders all of a sudden showed up with jump? So I mean, yeah. they kind of they kind of took jabs at Skylanders when they where they could. Yep, yep. Which is, I mean. Hey, it's 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 a competition, and they gotta they gotta defend themselves and kind of rub it in when they can. So, uh, what what kind of came next, uh, Caesar? Did they introduced the game and they talked about some past numbers, and then they they went with the uh, the new Disney Infinity 2.0 Marvel trailer, right? Is that what came next? Yeah, they they presented the trailer, and then um, and then they brought out Joe Casada. Who then brought out Brian Michael Bendis, who I guess wrote, as far as I can tell, at least the Avengers game that comes with the starter pack. He might have written um, all the other Marvel uh, stories, but I think it's mm -hmm. cool that they brought like a legit comic book writer to write the story. And they talked about him working uh, and Joe Casada, I guess. I think he was speaking for Marvel in general, mm -hmm. but uh, working closely with the team to make sure that the characters and the figures looked Marvel enough and Infinity enough. And for those that don't know Joe Quesada, he's he's the uh, Marvel creative, kind of creative director, right? He's the president of Marvel Comics, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> One step. For, I mean, that's huge, because Marvel is a brand that's that's huge. I mean, it may not be quite as large as Disney as a separate entity, but Marvel is huge, especially with the movies and comics and um, uh, all the the merchandising. So the fact that he was there was also crazy, crazy big. Um, so the trailer was pretty cool. So the trailer started off, Jason and I, we actually did a trailer breakdown right before this episode, so for those interested, go check that out. But it, it kind of started off like the teaser, right? I mean, it, it was almost frame for frame, the teaser. There, there were like a few. They they altered the teaser a bit too. Like the mm -hmm. portion that was the teaser. Did you notice the changes that they made? Yeah. So uh, so the first one that I noticed was an inclusion of a a long requested new Disney character. Um, was it Stitch? I mean, that was the first change that I noticed. It's, yeah, Stitch was the first one. Yeah, st it was Stitch, and then uh, Merida and uh, Maleficent. Yeah, so before we even kind of got to the Disney stuff, like we see, we're seeing these frames that are very similar to what we've seen before, with these other very specific Disney uh, Disney kind of nods in it, and uh, I think that was a really important thing because it was like, okay, in these couple shots, all you're seeing is Disney Infinity stuff outside of uh, Captain America's shield, but uh, you were seeing Disney Infinity stuff, and then some of these other. Uh, Disney Disney characters. I guess they were all characters that we saw. And so Stitch was the first one that we saw. Um, and then if you looked real close, you also saw Merida. I'm actually going to try to bring up a picture of that. We got a screen cap of that. And uh, these, I know all these shots are also on, on Vinyl Nation Kingdom site, so you can uh, take a look at that later in the show, and, and we, we're going to link to all of this info in the show notes, but yeah, here is a shot of Merida. It's kind of hard <coughs> to see, but you can obviously tell that is Merida. Um, 
with her bow and arrow, and I think it's kind of safe to say that she would be a playable character. That's what I would think. Uh, let me see if I can blow that up a little bit. So what's your guys' take on this? Uh, do you think it was important that we saw some of these Disney-specific items before kind of the, uh, the flooding of Marvel information? I personally did not see it. I was trying to write while I was viewing and stuff, so I did not see it until people started freaking out on the website. Um, but uh, it's great, and the fact with Merida is you have Hawkeye that has a bow. Merida has a bow. It's smart for them to create a bow you know, mechanism, mechanic, for two characters. It's mm-hmm. simple to do. Um so I, 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 seeing Merida and Stitch and Maleficent were very important, um, for me at least. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was very important that they did that because a lot of people were asking where the Disney was at this event. And um, Merida is a very popular princess. Um, it's also another female character they're bringing into the mm-hmm. game. And, and it, Pixar. It ties some of the other fe- um, brave toy box toys and power discs that we've seen um, previously released so uh, it's good to have uh, have some of the toys and the new figures rounding things out a bit by adding uh, Merida to the game. She's a very popular yeah. character. Rafa94 in the chat room is saying that they her hair looks awesome and he's uh, excited to see the animation of that and <laughs> I have too. It, it looks like Rapunzel done on a, in a different sort of way. Uh, unwieldy hair. And I think, in a way, it's a good good marketing technique because if you think about it, the whole event, clearly targeted at Marvel fans, and I think that's why they brought in the high high ranking people and the, and the stars because they wanted the existing Marvel fans to not be turned off by their quote unquote Pixar look. I think they wanted to cement the fact that this is full on Marvel stuff. Don't be afraid. We're not you know Disneyfying Marvel uh, in that context. And then, but then they get the bonus viral um, side of um, all the Disney stuff because all the Disney fans that have reacted and said, "Where's the Disney in this event?" It just goes viral on the net with people posting pictures of these, um, and so they're getting both messages out, I guess. Mm-hmm. But you know, I guess the Marvel people won't care as much, but the Disney fans really will care, and everyone's satisfied. Complete. I'm glad we saw her on the ship in this trailer because. Right before they showed the trailer, they had um, some power disc um, uh, shaped uh, figure uh, shaped items on a, a PowerPoint, and Merida's picture was on there. So um, yeah, kind of tied it in there. And also they had uh, a picture of Lilo and Stitch up there. So pe- people were probably trying, and they were the two odd uh, odd uh, characters out there. So that kind of tied it in, uh, gave people a glimpse of what they can expect in the game. <laughs> And uh, next up, the other Disney Disney kind of surprise that we saw. We've already mentioned her, but this is awesome. Look at that. So there's Maleficent. Uh, and this is a real clear shot, and you can no oh, doubt... Oh, that's Angelina Jolie right there. <laughs> right? Yeah, we were talking about that. It's not, a, it's not the cartoon version. You can definitely tell that's the live-action version of Maleficent. Um, now I'm wondering if they were able to tie it in with her movie recording, and it's actually Angelina on... That would be, that'd be sweet. Yeah, that would be. What do you guys think of uh, this character? Looks pretty pretty cool too. Looks uh, pretty detailed. So assuming this is also a playable character, a figure that, that you'll be able to high. buy. I think um, I think that'd be a great release um, to tie in with the Blu-ray uh, release um, this coming holiday season. Yeah. So when does the movie come out? The movie comes uh, out July or uh, in May. So May. Just, oh, May. Okay. Blu-ray release in probably October, November. Yeah. Which, yeah, I think that would be a great opportunity also if they gave her that sort of um, costume change power disc so that she could look like the original movie, Maleficent, as well. Caesar, that's an awesome idea. Or the wings, ooh, from the trailers. Mm. Ah, there you go. Give her the fairy wings. So I, I like that, and you guys kind of mentioned it, but we had Stitch and then we had two female characters, which was something, especially early on in Disney Infinity 1, before many uh, female characters were released. It was something they kind of got flagged for, and 
I think it's really important that they're kind of coming out the gate. And out of the three Disney characters we've seen, uh, two of them are female, and I think that's that's a good thing. I also like seeing the female characters in the starter set. We'll get to that later. But. Yeah, that's huge too. Cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, and there was a ton of ton of kind of stuff you could glean from from the trailer. Uh, the resolutions looked higher. The animations looked really, really good. Not that I'd ever had any problems with uh, animations in Infinity One. We got to see some uh, some other Marvel characters that they did not announce figures for. So, if you want to go ahead and uh, run down a few of those, do you remember some of those characters? Well, yeah, and I think um, I'm, I'm maybe I'm jumping the gun, but I think I'm going to speculate that there's going to be at least two more Marvel-specific uh, playsets, and I think one is going to be Spider-Man playset, mm-hmm. or Ultimate Spider-Man, because um, we saw the design the design of Spider-Man and the design of the Green Goblin that we saw clearly looked like the ones from the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. Um, and then we saw Groot and Rocket Raccoon, and so that could probably be uh, a a Guardians of the Galaxy uh, playset, which I'm, I'm, oh, it's almost a lot because it comes out, you know, in August, and I think it's, I think that's going to be because they mentioned multiple Marvel playsets for this release, and I think we're going to get at least those two, um, and uh, those were the characters uh, that we saw as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and we're going to kind of get to it uh, a little bit later when we discuss some new features of the Power Disc, but Jason and I, we were wondering with uh, Groot and Rock Raccoon if they were going to be kind of a single figure that kind of worked yeah. um, worked as one, or if or if it's going to be an accessory character, and that may make more sense. Uh, let me see if I can bring up that Spider-Man. So this was, uh, so was, is this Green Goblin? That yeah. is Green Goblin, yes. Because this doesn't look like... I mean, I, I agree with you guys because the, the hoverboard looks like Green Goblin, but I've, yeah. I haven't seen a character Green Goblin that looks like if this. You look, if you look at the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, and oh, it's easier actually probably to bring up the new Lego set. It kind of looks mm-hmm. exactly like the Lego set one. So. Okay. So so Spider-Man would, would be from the cartoon then, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what Disney yeah. has... Yeah, they own they own that for sure. So that's that's obviously what they're going to push, and then and it'd be easier to get the voice cast to do that as well. Right. So, uh, pirate Spidey, this is going to make you real excited, right? <laughs> my kids are going to love that. <laughs> I mean, my kids are going to love that. I don't. I doubt they're the only ones. It's true. That looks like an adult size costume you're wearing. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Old and um, and not fitting. <laughs> so I, I'm stoked about this because the the fun part of the Spider-Man video games is just web swinging through the uh, through the environments, and we've seen a lot of footage of what looks to be like a, a toy or a playset version of New York. So running through the playset would be a lot of fun with that. Uh, one can, character. Can I make a? Yes. I wanted to make a, just a Spider-Man comment. Um, but please. They, uh, they, they, when they were uh, showing off the powers of the characters, they showed off that um, the Hulk can wall crawl. Mm-hmm. And then without going too much into detail, they said, uh, and that's an ability another character uh, has. You know, So yep. they were clearly mentioning the fact that Spider-Man will have the ability to uh, climb up walls. And stuff Not like necessarily that. because Stitch actually was crawling a wall in the pre in the teaser. So I I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you're both that. right. Because obviously Stitch and Sp- Spider Man doesn't climb up their wall, then he's kind of useless. But yeah, no, I'm I'm <laughs> agreeing with you, but I mean, there's probably more than one character that can get the wall crawl ability. Absolutely. Uh, no, just Spider Man. <laughs> just <laughs> he's the one. We'll, we'll end it. We'll end it there. <laughs> So one thing uh, that we haven't talked about yet is this character right here. Playable character or no playable character? What do you guys think? I'm thinking playable. Playable. <laughs> All right, what do you think? <laughs> okay, Caesar, what do you think? Uh, I think it kills uh, two birds with one stone. Everybody wanted Frozone. You get Nick Fury. Uh, and uh. I think that <laughs> should be playable. Well, that, that would be cool if they had uh, Frozone. Cost- the costume change yeah. character and uh, Nick Fury one, kind of like the Jack Sparrow and Tonto 
um, yeah. the effect they have there. That'd be that'd be pretty nice. Kind of, it kind of looks like Frozone. <laughs> Just give him so, one of those costume change discs. We're good. There you go. Where's my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here is that uh, that shot of the Hulk climbing up that building, and then uh, right after this, I'll tell you why I think it's going to be a playable character. That is him on a uh, on a motorcycle right there. There you yeah. go, Jason. We were talking about that. That's a different motorcycle than uh, Captain's, but it's still a motorcycle. You think he's playable? Oh, definitely. That's that's. That's confirmation of playability right there. Unless, on the off chance that maybe that could be part of a cutscene from one of the mm. play sets, but I think that's pretty much locked in. That he'll be a playable character. Completely agree. All right, guys. Well, that's awesome. Uh, we don't really need to go much more into the uh, trailer. We're going to talk about a lot of things that were discussed in the trailer in, in just a little bit, but before we move on, do you have any last minute things you want to say about the trailer itself? All right, uh, let's let's just keep things moving along. So, what have we talked about so far that we can confirm? We can confirm, obviously, there's Disney Infinity 2.0. We can also confirm there's Infinity Marvel. Uh, they <laughs> said, I think it's safe to say that Disney Infinity Marvel is a playset. Although uh, we, I think, all of us here in the uh, the hangout know that it's going to be there's a starter pack that will include three characters as well as a base. Um, but do you guys think this is with the inclusion of those other Disney characters? Uh, Disney Infinity Marvel is going to be a playset or a series of playsets for Disney Infinity 2.0. Is that is that a pretty safe bet? Is that what you guys think? Well, the starter pack comes with the Avengers playset and the disc. For 2.0, the Avengers playset, the three starter characters, then those two time time toy box game discs, and then everything else I think will be playsets, whether it be Marvel or non-Marvel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, and they did go out of their way to uh, mention the fact that everything, uh, all characters, all power disc, even the bases for Disney Infinity One are going to be forward compatible. So. That really negates the need to have a Marvel Infinity with its own base that is only specific to kind of Marvel playsets. The only was... thing they failed to mention was the power, the, the playsets, the playset crystals. You're still going to need to put in the first game, I believe, in order to play the playsets from game one. Well, and they, but that's actually a question that uh, Jason and I were talking about before the show. It, they, I didn't really see any indication that playsets are going to be forward compatible, just figures and disc and and toy boxes. Uh, what yeah. leads you to believe that playsets themselves would be forward compatible? I, I never thought so, and I don't. They never mentioned oh, them okay. here or there. So I'm going to guess no. Um, I'm going to guess that's the only component that isn't forward compatible. Um, but it was really. This is the first time they've always said that. It's going to be for it's compatible, but they've kind of been wishy-washy on the details of that. So it's good to know that everything you've unlocked in, in one and uh, all of the toy box that you've created in <coughs> one are going to work in Disney Infinity 2, which is, I mean, that, those are pretty good, big things because that means that all of the hard work and time and energy that people have put into their toy box creations aren't going to be left in the dust when 2.0 comes out. I wouldn't mind betting that... Um... Just because of the way that's, that it's been marketed as Disney Infinity 2.0 Marvel Superheroes, I wouldn't be too surprised if they released a whole other starter pack that was a different theme, something that was more traditional Disney Infinity. Because, I don't know, it just seemed, to me it seems confusing because the, the starter set seems so heavily Marvel focused, if you know what I mean. It doesn't seem to lend itself to the Disney Infinity platform quite as well, in my opinion. I think if they released a new starter set that you could also get the base and three other figures in a completely different skew, whether it be whatever, a Lilo and Stitch starter pack or whatever, mm -hmm. I think I could see that working, having two different starter packs and you choose, and it doesn't matter which one you buy, because if you buy the um, Princess starter pack, for instance, you can still just then buy the standalone um, Marvel superheroes um, disc or download it or, or something, you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter 
where you get your base from. Ultimately, the starter kits are only really if you don't have an existing, um, you know, base. So do you think they'll, which brings to the point, do you think they'll release, basically, if you don't need the the um, the base, do you think they'll just have, like, a three-character pack, which comes with just the the piece and the three characters? Well, no, and you're still missing the disc, though. You're missing the actual 2.0 disc. Yeah, and the disc. disc. I'm just saying, basically, a kit that doesn't have the, the reader in it. Well, I mean, Skylanders released Giants with that in mind, but they didn't sell, it didn't sell the the portal they called it the portal owners pack did not sell as well as the regular pack because they were getting that that many more um, new players so I don't know uh, I would I, I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna say that they're gonna give people that option uh, especially since the bases are forwards compatible mm-hmm. so um, it, it's it's gonna be a weird thing to see once it hits retail but I, I mean it's an experiment and it's a platform so I mean they're, they're gonna and go on that, but, but um, I'm definitely going to need a new starter pack and base for because uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest <clears throat> with you guys here, and uh, I only play on on the regular Wii, so I'm going to upgrade to Xbox One for the new. You're going to have for to. the new version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wii. that's. Go ahead, Travis. A Wii's no longer supported. Yeah, which right, nor what I want it to be. <laughs> You know, for Disney Infinity One, it was a good option. If, if like for you, Caesar, it's it's your only option. Um, so, in that respect, it's also very good that they are having these full new starter packs. But uh, for those that have forward compatible bases, my I expect that they're going to have a starter pack that is the same without the base, and it maybe be uh, ten or fifteen dollars cheaper. But everything else will will be the same because, like uh, Travis mentioned, you are going to need an actual game disc for Disney Infinity 2.0. And I think that's where this whole Marvel thing is is kind of it's a big question mark. So is the Marvel starter pack does that include Disney Infinity 2.0 game disc? And then to Jason's point, are we going to get a Disney starter pack that also includes a 2.0 game disc? And I could see both of those scenarios happening, but we're also going to need each figure and each uh, pack-in outside of the game disc and the base available for purchase individually. I have a feeling, my theory is they'll just have the Marvel starter kit, and the Marvel starter kit will contain the 2.0 disc. They'll put out enough stuff to get the people that are Disney diehards to buy the Marvel pack just to get the disc so they can play their other play sets. I kind of agree with Jason. I think you have to have a Disney option there because there's a lot of people that uh, aren't as excited that Marvel is in the game. Uh, They think they should have their own uh, Marvel Infinity. Uh, so I think there will be uh, some kind of Disney option for people out there. I, I still, I, I'm, I would have a problem. I, I see that their problem would be releasing the six characters, the three in the Marvel and the three in the non-Marvel, as single pack characters down the road. I mean, because you're going to have to give that option because nobody's going to buy two starter packs for the six characters. I will. Yeah, well, but individual. <laughs> I, think, I think people will. Well, that and breaking them out, though, too, is not <clears throat> abnormal for them. I mean, there have been villain packs that has three villains, but then also those villains are sold separately. There's a frozen pack, which includes the the power disc, and they're, all of those are sold separately as well. I just think it's too good of an opportunity to pass up. to, to bre- Like, I just think if they would release a princess um, starter pack or something like that that's more heavily skewed towards girls. You've got the perfect, you know, boys and girls starter kit to start off with. Um, well, what, what would your one play set be? What do you mean? Oh, well, I don't, I don't know. I'd just... <laughs> that's, that's a, a long for another show. right there. <laughs> but um, I just think that's a... I just think it's too good of an opportunity and, and ultimately it just boils down to this fact that they're clearly trying to build... This whole show demonstrated that I think they're really trying to build the platform. And I just think having a Marvel-only starter set confuses that message because it feels like its own. If you were just, if you were the unknown to just look at it, and I read it, I would look at that and go, "Oh, it's Disney Infinity, but it's all Marvel-based." 
Like there's no, there has to be some counterbalance so that the, the, the message still stands clear that this is a platform that all of Disney's franchises will eventually build upon. Like Lego Star Wars. I mean, not Lego Star Wars, uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. That's a self-contained game and kind of the, the Lego games, but those are all separate games. They're not part of the same franchise. Which actually brings forth a point I'll just touch on that I read in one of the... I was reading the uh, comments in the IGN articles and someone made the comment that the fact that, you know, you can basically get all these characters in a single game that was Lego Marvel on the, um, on you know, current games without having to buy, you know, a $17 figure or whatever. I must have in the States, you know, um, buy 10 or so different figures to get some a similar experience. I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's a good point to make, that there are existing Marvel games that you can pay one sixty dollar fee and get all the characters playable. Right. I, I, I saw that somewhere else, too, and uh, that's kind of a good point. Uh, and it actually makes me... I was considering getting the Marvel Lego game when I get the Xbox One, but now that I've heard that comment and I've seen this, I'm not going to get the Marvel, the Marvel Lego game. <laughs> I'm just going to go <laughs> stay with Infinity. <laughs> Yeah, it's I don't know. I don't I think that's I know Jason we've been doing the show long enough, so I, I kinda know where you stand on infinity stuff. But um I think although the comparison is similar, uh there's some collectability with both. I still think we're looking oh, at two definitely. very different types of experiences and uh, they've really shown that they are committed to that physical experience as well of the toys and the, the power disc and stuff, so if anything, um, it just again raises the situation with the brand confusion because if you the fact that it's only been shown as Marvel, you can make those comparisons. But if they had shown, no, there's a Lion King playset with this as well, well then that argument just dies because it's not it's not an apples to apples comparison. Whereas it stands at the moment, you could make a case to go, well, how is this game going to offer me anything different than what Lego Marvel mm. offered? No. Side note, anyway. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's the strange part about this announcement is how they really just were just focusing on Marvel and they made it like a whole Marvel announcement. And and so, and I, and I guess that's just going to raise questions until E3 about like what's the Disney commitment. But luckily mm-hmm. there's, there's been, there have been enough Easter eggs that we know there's going to be Disney yeah. in the game. I. I think also um, we also have to pay attention as to when pre-sales go on for the starter packs because if Toys R Us starts start, uh, doing pre-orders for the starter pack tomorrow, that means to me that there's only one starter pack. You're not going to give the people the option. Um, if they don't start until later, then there's possibly going to be a second starter pack. I guess we'll see. Time time will tell. There's uh, lots of info that's still going to come out, and so as, as it gets closer, I'm sure we'll know the answer soon enough. So let's talk about the release a little bit of Disney Infinity Marvel. Uh, so they said fall 2014, so that's good news. They give us a range, and and I guess that's spring 2014 for you, Jason. So, uh, <laughs> that's correct. He, he complained about that in the last show. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly. Yes. You said, "Don't give me a range." You're like, "Give me specifics." I specifically well, we gave that instruction, and they ignored it. We it's also what, know it's, it's, We also know it's not going to be in in August. At least that's what they said. It's not in August. And we so. and we know it's not going to be in October because that's when the new Skylanders comes out, and Disney's going to want to have a jump start on them. Not only that, I'm thinking middle September. Second agreed. Third. I'm just saying September. It's got to be September. If they're not going to go into October to compete directly with Skylanders, they and they have to be in store shelves uh, at the very latest October to, to really attract that uh, holiday shopping and that holiday market. So, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing September. Which it probably, it wouldn't it be funny if it was August and then that leak happened and we we're like, we'll show you, we're making it September now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. So, uh, 2000, fall 2014, the show's consensus is uh, September, um, or spring 2014 for Jason. Uh, the starter pack, <laughs> that was actually kind of a, a pretty cool thing, right? So the starter pack figures for Marvel is Iron Man, Thor, and uh, Black Widow. What do you guys think of that lineup? 
Like it. Yeah, I think that's the smartest uh, lineup they could come up with because uh, Iron Man is obviously the leader. He's the most popular of the Avengers. So then you got the uh, a female character in the starter pack in Black Widow, and she's awesome in her own right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they included Thor, which uh, I think mainly is because uh, Captain America and Hulk are, uh, are arguably almost as popular as Iron Man. So people are going to buy them regardless. So might as well throw Thor in there. I really dig the fact that they, it's a variety. I like you, Pyre. The having Black Widow in there is great. Uh, we're we're giving a, there's an inclusion of another female character to really get that out in the market. Uh, she's also I'm I'm gonna say less popular than the other two for the sheer fact that she does not have her own movie. She is parts of of a lot of the movies, but uh, she doesn't have her own movie like Thor and Iron Man does. She should. She totally should. I mean, she's yeah. to be getting one, so we'll see. Personally, she's one of my favorite characters, so actually seeing her in the game was awesome and made my day. Um, Can I point out that her figure kind of looks like the um, Miss Mrs. Incredible figure? <laughs> the, yeah, like, the stance, the, yeah. yeah the, <laughs> the pose that she's in. Yeah, yeah, that's. It'd be funny um, if Mer- Merida is in the same, like all the female characters, <laughs> they get the same pose. Well, it's fine. It, it, luckily, like her her uh, silhouette is different, so we know they didn't just like recycle her. And I, I'm I'm guessing her head is not going to fall off like uh, Invisigirl's. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> and it's Elastigirl by, by the way. Elastigirl, sorry. Invisigirl? I guess Invisigirl. That's uh, Marvel, isn't it? That that's Invisible Woman, but yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm a Disney guy. What can I say? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? So the other figures that they actually showed off, Caesar, you got to take a close look at those. Uh, do you want to run them down? Uh, yeah. Well, they showed. Yeah, they showed the uh, starter pack figures, and they showed Hawkeye, um, Hulk, and Cap. I was I was really hoping they were going to give out a Cap figure. I don't know why I thought they would, but I kind of uh, hope too. So. Yeah, I really wanted a cap. Um, they they all look great. I mean, um, they look in in style and in scale with our our other figures. Uh, they look like just like beautiful pieces. I mean, I think one of the reasons why they really pushed Marvel and and, and did this whole sort of circus for Marvel is, I mean, not only are they going whole hog on it with the play sets, but they're going to bring in like all those Marvel fans. I mean, those guys collect all. All the stuff they collect, all the figures. They, they're people who, who just love Marvel. So they they know that if they really focus on that, those people are going to buy all that stuff. And th- those were beautiful figures. And one thing I, I should point out about the figures that they mentioned is that unlike uh, Disney Infinity One, because we are getting multiple Marvel playsets, certain of those characters are going to be able to cross over onto those other playsets and, and be playable as well. So that's 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 going to be really cool, and that's a lot of value. Uh, it's the closest I think for one is the Incredibles playset because they had the the most figures that could work in a a playset. But that's a constant. It not really it, well. I guess complaint for a lot of people is that you know I we get Disney wants to lock down their properties and and the playsets themselves actually make sense, but you also want value out of these figures, and so being able to play with all these figures in the different playsets is uh that's huge. Wait, hold, but we'll go back there. I didn't think that the playsets were now cross property. <laughs> But Mar- no, I'm saying so. All of these Marvel figures will be playable, like Caesar was saying, in the Marvel play sets, set or sets. They they'll they may, they were very clear that they said some figures will be playable in the other play sets. So not all of them. So, so not all the Marvel. Yeah, yeah, not. Really? Yeah, not all of the Marvel figures will be playable in the other Marvel play sets, but some of the Marvel figures will be playable in the Marvel. Play sets and and that could actually tie into something that I noticed and that Travis was pointing out to you about uh, Iron Man's costume. Um, oh yeah, that. Iron Man's costume. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk about that now. Yeah, go ahead. Me to, 
Do you, who do you want, me or me or him? Travis, go ahead, go ahead, ahead Travis. Anyway. Um, well, I was uh, going through they uh, with the release release of the images for the um, the pieces that you're seeing right now on screen. They also released images of 15 power discs, 15 new ones out of the 80 going to be coming out that are Marvel themed. One of them was a costume change for Iron Man. This costume change is they in the description black and white version of Iron Man in the Guardians of the Galaxy. So it could be that Iron Man could be playable in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, also, it reminded me of a version of Iron Man that we saw in toy form only in Iron Man before Iron Man 3 was released. And Marvel actually had the people take down the images of this toy until the movie was officially released. It was called Deep Space Suit Iron Man. So I was just thinking... We thought at the time that that meant that there was going to be a teaser for Guardians of the Galaxy in the Iron Man 3 movie. Which I now, heard. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty big rumor. It never happened. But it could mean that possibly Iron Man has a cameo in the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie or just that he is playable in the Guardians of the Galaxy playset. So. I'm going to... If you... If, I'm gonna. I would like to read the actual the wording of the um, description. Please. Okay. It says uh, the name of the the name of the power disc is Stark Arc Reactor, and then it says try the Mark 42 on for size exclamation point, and then it says unlock Iron Man's black and white special edition Guardians of the Galaxy armor with added boom. So it sounds like. Like there's there's two armors on one disc or something. Wow, that's crazy cool. Like um, I, if you go ahead. Oh no, we lose Caesar. I I think they obviously yeah, I... uh, screwed up the description on that website because uh, the that other Mark uh, costume was from Spy Iron obviously from Iron Man three, so I. Like they messed up putting the images on there. I think they might have messed up the descriptions as well. It's well, 40, 42 is not the black and white. That would be, I think thirty nine is the black and white that I'm talking about. So they might have screwed that up. I'm just this was an official description that they released with the image on uh, the asset packet that we got. So. And did you post on that on uh, Vi VK? Yeah, there's a there's a story on v on Violation Kingdom. Yeah, okay. I will. Uh, I'm going to post a link on the page on the chat right now. Uh, so people can see it, but, um, I mean, take a look at the disc, take a look at the description. I know the description might be a little bit wordy and might be a little wrong, but obviously there's something they're saying about Guardians of the Galaxy in a black and white special edition armor, so. So why, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, because this is, I'm guessing that's not the right disc art then for that. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if that's he, what you were saying. I believe, and maybe Caesar can uh, chime in on this. Um, during the presentation, when they were showing the different suits, they put that one down, and um, they said the Mark Forty Two, and it was the Iron Man Three costume uh, from, um, yeah, the one that he wore in that Iron Man Two. Hmm. So uh, right. uh, uh, yes, that's probably for Guardians of the Galaxy. What what I'm speculating, uh, Pirate, is that the disc, like if you use the disc on the Avengers playset, it'll unlock the Mark 42, but if you use it on the Guardians of the Galaxy playset, it'll unlock the other uniform. I, I, think, I think that'd be cool and uh, definitely bring more value to that disc. Uh, the other thing I want to know about these, these different costume discs is... Um, are they just specifically playable for those uh, the Iron Man character or the Hulk or Captain America? I mean, it'd be fun to um, maybe put Sorcerer Mickey down and throw uh, Captain America. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 those are the type of match I'm expecting to see at this event. So, uh, yeah, w what else can we do with these costumes? The, can we only, the only problem I have with the Captain America one was he produces a different shield also. So I don't know if they would allow the shield to come onto, like, let's say, Mickey, because he doesn't have sure. the shield throwing ability. So sure they would. It would it would be a tool or a pack, like. Uh, I guess yeah. Okay. And and that's I think we need to kind of 
move with that assumption that if you have discs that modify appearance, it's going to have to affect Disney Infinity 1 characters or Toy Box only characters in specific ways because they've kind of set the precedence that power discs are going to be universal discs that can work no matter where yeah, you're at. I can see that, and they are circle discs, and there are there's three of them. Three costume changes coming out for Marvel, so... Yeah. Uh, well, that's exciting. I, I guess that's... Who knows if that's a marketing uh, kind of mistype, um, but either way, that it will be cool to learn more about that as well. Uh, let's go back to the, the character... Uh, so the characters look really cool, but I also really dig the the Avengers Tower in the background as the, the playset piece. As <laughs> I like that. I uh, just wanted to to mention that as well. well before while we we're move looking on. at the figures, yep. I just wanted to point out another thing I noticed. That Hulk figure is amazing. Uh, it just looks great. And um, it makes me think about those glass PDP um, cases that they wanted everybody to buy. I just know <laughs> Marvel figures are not going to fit in those cases. No, it's going to be like what the Wreck-It Ralph one, where you had to it's cut a hole out the side. Wreck-It Ralph and a Hulk that won't fit in the case. Uh, <laughs> is that is that why the cases are now on clearance for like five bucks on Toys R Us? So. Yeah, I can't wait to see the 2.0 versions of those cases. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what I, another thing I want to point out about the figures is that if you look at them, they really do look like Disney-fied versions. Like that looks like Disney's The Hulk. You know, that mm-hmm. looks like uh, Black Widow as a Disney princess. And, and I, I really love that look of them. That they they do have that sort of Disney like that looks like a Disney prince in a in mm-hmm. a in a Captain America costume. Like it. I, oh I yeah. It's really, yeah, Jason, you were talking about this a little bit before show start. Uh, it's to me what this really tells us is that okay, this is Disney Infinity, or this is Marvel and the Disney Infinity universe. It's not the other way around. It's not like okay, we're conforming the Infinity look to match Marvel. It's like no, we have a consistent uh, design and art style, and Marvel is going to fit and and kind of that infinity space. And I think that's important because, again, it's showing respect to uh, to infinity as, as kind of the brand and the, the property. Yeah, I love them. I, I was uh, afraid we were going to see uh, Marvel Superhero Squad looking figures, and uh, <coughs> I think these are top-notch. I think they look a lot better than my worst nightmares. <laughs> and I hate to say this because it's really being kind of nerdy, but I like the bases and that the bases are different. Like, I love, my favorite base out of all of these is the Hawkeye base because I like how it's like he's standing on that, perched on that rock, and if we look at these two bases, if you compare the Iron Man to the uh, Captain America, those are also different. Yeah, uh, they're the same theme base, meaning they're mm-hmm. the same color and the same type, but in like DI1, everything was the same base. This is a little bit more, you know, there's a little more variance to it. Yeah, completely agree. And I'm just going to call it now. I, I, I expect these six characters to be uh, Toys R Us crystal figures. All six of them. A whole six of them, huh? <laughs> All six. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing yeah, me. I, I, me too. I was about to Maybe say I want to kick you off the show. Weird as a crystal, but... Uh, <laughs> I think would look... Captain America, maybe. Oh. I think Radiation Iron Hulk Man. would be awesome. No. Iron Man Iron... with a glowing arc reactor. Awesome. Yeah. Or just a different color. that, like, So when it, it's, the light shines through, it like kind of reflects differently. Well, dis- like, uh, Skylanders has the light core figures where you stick them on the base and they glow. Why not make light core uh, Iron Man? Do you want... Variants, Travis, because I'm going to kick you off just like I'm going to kick uh, Pirate off for mentioning crystals again. Oh, dude, Radiation Hulk, man! Come on. <laughs> okay. Glow, All right. They have glow. They have glow buzz in the you know in the works. I mean, like he's online exclusive, download exclusive, but still, come on, Radiation uh, Hulk. Fine, I'll give you that. So, uh, Caesar, how many actually empty spots did they have up on the stand? That because that, that was an obvious like. Hey, guess what? We're not showing you everything today, but you have at least this many to look forward to. I think that oh, he lost. He left. There, I think there were twelve spots. There were yeah, twelve I total think... spots. I wrote a note saying, "Ooh, twelve characters," and I only filled in six of the spots. So yeah, 
Well, and I actually had to note 12 more to come, so I don't know. If maybe they I said guess. in uh, the official press release, they said upwards of 20, I think they said 20 or more than 20 Marvel-specific characters. Do you, does yeah. that number sound right? Yeah, they, they, yeah, they said... Um, I, I don't know where people are getting the 20 number. Um, I know that they, they revealed the six and they said more than a dozen more to come. I so, think it was I mean, in I, I, the. No, go ahead. But sorry. That, but, but that podium thing that had twelve s- slots, and I was very, I was very excited, wishful thinking, hoping that they were going to fill all in, those twelve slots. In the in the fact sheet that was released with the uh, the press pack, it says right here, players will be able to take on the role of more than twenty Marvel characters, including Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, Hulk, and Hawkeye. Wow. So. Hmm. It's exciting. It is exciting. But if well, you look so... at it, if you look at it, you have five Guardians of the Galaxy. You have six, at least six Avengers. You have whatever Spider-Man comes up with. It's going to be easy to hit twenty. Yeah, and that's not even any of the villains, and they got to get some villains in there. So uh, in that trailer, they showed Loki and they. Uh, um, oh, I can't. Is it Modok? Modok and Green Goblin. They showed Ooh. three villains. So, uh, Jason was commenting on and I the... and Frost Giants. A oh, Frost Giants is that from uh, is that from Guardians? Or no, that's from... from Thor. From Thirst for Thor movie. And I have I have a memory of a small animal. I tell you guys, <laughs> uh, but Jason was talking about the the uh, <laughs> the villains and the detail on the the villains. And Loki that... is half a giant. Loki is what? Oh no, I think we're getting a delay or something. Loki's half frost giant. Oh, I know. I know that. I'm quizzing you guys. <laughs> yeah, huh, yeah, you half. know that my ass. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, uh, yeah, it was a quiz. Uh, but so at least the main villain, so uh, Modok, uh, <laughs> Goblin, and Loki, they they were really detailed, and we haven't seen detailed villains in Disney Infinity 1 that weren't figures. Uh, we've seen kind of these generic models. So do you guys, could you see the three of them being uh, being playable characters? I hope so, yeah. That, that would be awesome. Yeah. Do you think uh, MODOK, am I saying that right? Yeah, M-O-D-O-K, MODOK. Okay. Do you think, because he, he would be a little bit different, do you think he would be a playable character? He's a little awkward looking, I think. Uh, <laughs> I, would trade, I would trade Red Skull out for a MODOK any day. Oh. <laughs> you're talking about awkward looking, and you're wearing a Spider-Man ha- hat. <laughs> Pirate outfit. Um, I actually, I think with the new hover ability that they incorporated into one of the mechanics, mm-hmm. that Modok is a perfect hover uh, component. So yeah. I could easily see Modok being a, a playable villain in either Spider-Man or uh, Avengers. That would be cool. Um. All right, well, let's actually, that's a great segue into the, the Toy Box improvement. So one thing they made sure to mention is that they're really listening to fans this time around. Well, not that they wouldn't be earlier, but we had no idea what Infinity was last with the first version. So they said they're listening to, to fans, and so they really want to improve on, on some of the things that are in Infinity 1 and, and uh, listening to, to player feedback. One thing they did was obviously the forwards compatibility. Uh, that was something they... New fans were going to want, and so uh, so they mentioned that long ago. But it was nice to get some clarification. Uh, but then they also so like the first half was kind of like this Marvel conversation. Then the second half was this this toy box conversation. Some uh, items to note is that uh, it's it, they're introducing new structured uh, gameplay mechanics into the toy box. Uh, as far as game design goes, they were really trying to focus their efforts on uh, on the software. Uh, they pointed out, they did a one, one-to-one comparison of uh, the Incredibles environment, so the Incredibles playset, and compared that to an Avengers playset, which uh, was Ma- uh, the city of Manhattan, and, and it said it was four times larger. And not only that, they showed off some pretty cool environmental effects. So that was, I mean, that's kind of go, gives you an idea uh, of balance of scale in this version. That they, it sounds like the system, the 
software and the uh, platform is a little more optimized and efficient to be able to pull off that. And who knows, it could just be the elimination of the Wii platform. They don't have to work uh, with that constraint anymore. Um, what do you guys think of just uh, kind of some of those things? What of the Manhattan being four times larger than the Incredibles place? That, that's insane. That's <laughs> just they and they actually called it Marvel Manhattan. They that's specifically right. said Marvel Manhattan. So in the spot where you're supposed to have buildings, you have this massive Avengers. I mean, they were able to take Manhattan and make it their own, which is that's just, cool. Well, and and. Uh, the Incredibles place that it was large for Infinity, but it's not large if you look at other types of sandbox games. Uh, take a look at, since we mentioned it earlier, the Lego Super Marvels game. So it's it's nice to see that they're kind of competing in, uh, in that space as well, just the kind of gameplay and, and uh, value for each one of these play sets. I think the real question is, is Jason happy with the uh, toy box changes? So far, I think it all looks uh, swell, I guess. <laughs> I think it's good that, I guess, if you've got all the extra power, I think it's better to put it into scalability rather than increasing resolution of mm -hmm. graphics, if you know what I mean. Because I already think, you know, it looks pretty nice on the PlayStation 3, particularly with that toy effect. So I'm glad that they, would, you know, have chosen to put the power into, say, expanding those things. But I think we'll get into a little bit more of the the specific mentions. The ones I'm most excited about are all the things they mentioned about the... Everyone who's ever watched my uh, reviews knows that I hate how in Disney Infinity toy boxes don't have definitive endings. I'm so yes. glad they made reference to that in the um, thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the no more, no more aren't going to cut it anymore. No That's more it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you're right, Jason. We will get to that, and I know that's welcome, welcome part. Uh, I guess one thing we kind of skipped is there were a lot of changes to characters themselves. So the first thing they mentioned was something they called character locomotion, right? Uh, which basically is character mobility, right? It's it's how the characters get around the environments. Uh, some of the things they showed off were hover and forward flight. That was pretty cool. Uh, it looks different than like Buzz Lightyear's jetpack, for example. It looks like as Iron Man, you have 360 degrees field of uh, flight there. That's which is which is awesome. It opens up total. I mean, it opens up like Peter Pan or planes, mm -hmm. or you add water, and you all of a sudden got Finding Nemo. So there you go. So that in and of itself is it's a real, no pun intended, it's a real game changer. And, and the possibilities that that brings to the table are kind of things that we don't have the ability to do now, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, the, another mobility, or I guess locomotion to use their term, super jump. And they also said you could level this up. So uh, the animation they showed off was kind of like a, a double jump, right? And and this is what you were talking about. They kind of put the dig on Skylanders, right, Travis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because John, John V was like, yeah, and we created jump, and, uh, and, <laughs> and others followed, and now we have super jump, and this... And the fun, awesome. the fun thing I the fun thing I saw was that like Captain America's super jump or was it was it Captain America I think Captain America they showed and they showed Hulk Captain America had a totally different super jump than the Hulk I mean the Hulk's was just massive compared to what uh, what Captain America could do but they still was pretty awesome that they were like jumping between buildings mm -hmm. and then uh, and I guess they followed Hulk Hulk jumped into the wall climb ability didn't he Yeah he, he did they followed yeah. right into that wall climb. So, and and I don't know, Caesar. If you remember, they they did tease, um, they teased more wall climbing. We talked about it earlier. Uh, I can't remember what they said, but it's like Hulk's another not the character only one. had it. Yeah, right. yeah. Another there's well. To be fair, I think they did sort of were, were less or a little more vague about it, and they did make it seem like other characters. Mm -hmm. So Travis could be right about Stitch, but I'm going to go on the record and say he's wrong, and it's only Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm going to say well, I mean, that it. I'm going to say that they created the wall climb ability. They'll give as many characters as they feel yeah. fit the wall climb ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Pirate Spidey, you have something to say. Um, <laughs> I remember the only one that uh, whenever they said you could level your characters up to level 20, was I not the only one praying that they would have a, some level up trick like they had in the first one? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't either. Funny, that's, 
Well, everything is comp- everything is forward compatible. So how are they going to take away the you know fan trick? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll bring them to uh, I'll bring all my Marvel superheroes to Disney Infinity One and level them up to twenty, and then bring them. <laughs> <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why you don't want to do that. Uh, so just bear with me. I know you like taking the easy way out. That's why you, you jump from building to building, swinging, because you, you want to skip all the traffic. But let me tell you why you don't want to use the fan trick for leveling up Disney Infinity 2 characters. The reason you don't want to do that is because it adds a sort of this RPG element, this this carrot on the end of the stick that we are constantly talking about. So the the... They brought up the uh, leveling up in the attributes and skill trees uh, part of the discussion. So you're going to be able to unlock new moves, unlock combo hits, unlock uh, additional health and, and other stat upgrades. And so when you level up a character, you actually get rewarded for that. It's not when I get to level 5, my color changes from bronze to silver to gold to... Um, yeah, that's it. So <laughs> I, I was thinking platinum, but no, that's not this game. So you know, I mean, there's reason, and there's uh, they're giving you motivation to actually level those figures up instead of bouncing your controller on your desk and walking away for. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but there's gonna be twenty plus characters at twenty levels. Uh, you know what? We're gonna to have to do an extra life marathon every weekend. To get <laughs> well, well, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Try to sell you. Well, I was just gonna say that in Skylanders, when you level up your characters, you or you get enough coins or whatever, you don't have to do it right away. You have to usually have to go to a base or a home port to level up your Skylanders characters. So I have a feeling that your leveling points or your skill tree points or whatever. We'll save until you want to decide to use them. I don't think you'll have to use them right when you level up. Um, I agree. So do you think like some are going to be more expensive than others, so you're going to kind of have to save up for different... Uh... If you look at one of the one of the s- spots, they actually showed like a, a, a number of skill tree things, and then you could buy them, and I guess they cost a certain amount. So yeah, maybe certain ones will cost more. Um, I know Skylanders has a varying cost as far as gold for different uh, upgrades. So Interesting. Um, I did actually take a screen cap of this. I was able to snag it. Uh, I know this is something that Jason and I, we've discussed, and it's not just us, lots, uh, lots of folks on the show. But this is something that, I don't know, I'm really excited about because this finally, it gives us reason to own all these characters other than just the collecting aspect of it. It it's, gives us a reason to buy two incredible figures because they're going to have different character abilities and you can un, uh, upgrade them differently. And You know, some of those abilities and those skill tree features, they might be uh, some might be universal, but if you can't respec and you you make a choice and then you're kind of stuck with that choice with a, I'm sure you'll be able to change it with some penalty but maybe you want to have uh, Captain America have I don't know a certain a certain uh, melee ability and then Thor has the same a similar unlock but you took him another direction you could put two different characters down and you're like oh I feel like being a brawler right now I could throw down Thor or I want to be this uh, other thing that I unlocked I could throw down Captain America because I think that's how the skill tree is kind of works with Skylanders. You're you're locked in. Um, you are locked in. You're totally locked in, and every choice upgrades you know takes away a, an option. They actually ask you, do you want to go this way or that way? Do you want to be ranged or melee, or do you want to be super ranged or just ranged? It depends on what the character is. Each character has a different choice. So. Well, and that but that adds weight to those choices, right? Oh yeah, totally. Like so, I, I have two, to the, two of the same character from different generations, leveled up differently, and one of them is awesome in close combat. <laughs> same character is leveled up differently, is awesome in ranged combat. So. Okay. I hope they don't do that because, in my opinion, that flies in the face of the whole principle of that it's supposed to be you know, you playing with your action figures. And when you play with your own action figures, you define the rules at that moment, if you know what I mean. If you're playing a game, 
you know, if you're playing with your action figures in Zygarde, you, you want to be able to change that if you know what I mean. I don't think they should force mm. people to buy multiple of a figure to experience every type of gameplay that that character or can you could, have. They might say you can reset the tree and go from scratch. Yeah, that's what I mean, just respecking. You should have the ability to respec it so that, again, it just feels like and if, that, if in your free play session at that moment you say, I want a heavily melee-based Captain America rather than a ranged Captain America, then you should be able to define that and play as you wish, so to speak. So I don't know if you're going to have to go someplace to unlock it, kind of like the, uh, the, the toy box. So in the toy box you have the the vault that you can you can do spins and you can access that from the menu at any time. But when you're playing a playset, you have to actually go to areas to buy these new toys. Um, here's a screen grab I was able to take, and this is the menu system. And you can tell it's a work in progress because there's a virtual reader. This is probably uh, for the devs, and and so they don't don't when they're working, they don't have to put down a physical disc every time. But uh, skill tree is right there in the the menu, and if you click on that, it takes you to the skill tree. Um, but then another thing up there, and they, they mentioned it, but they were still pretty vague about was this collectibles. What do you guys think the collectibles could be? Well, the collectibles, would didn't they team that up with the interiors, the interior part of the toy, of the toy box, where the more collectibles you collect, the better your interior house or home could or be? Or unlocks. Um, yeah. I think that's, I think so. Uh, I, again, it was still pretty vague. And so. maybe each character has his own collectibles that you collect throughout either the system, kind of like the, the treasure chests. Maybe mm -hmm. the more you level them up or the more experience you get, you get certain collectibles only specific to that character. Yeah. They, like they, I, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, like, they showed uh, the big stuffed puppy dog that, that Iron Man gave Pepper Potts. I doubt that that would be a collectible that you could unlock with Black Widow. Right. They, there was no mention of the vault or spins or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious as to how, what's that going to work? Like maybe that's what, what you're pointing out is probably the new version of that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. they, didn't, they, def they definitely didn't mention um, that stuff. So. Yeah. Well, the other uh, the other bit they talked about as far as uh, new for characters is special skills in combat. So they talked about these classes. They talked about a, a brawler that was could be Thor and, and Captain America. They talked about this kind of range class, which was Hawkeye and, and Black Widow. And then they didn't actually name it. I I made my own name. So they talked about Hulk being uh, having the most powerful uh, the big attack badass in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and and well, no, I'm I'm calling him like a tank uh, because if you have a brawler, you have to have something kind of bigger than that. Um, they also said, you know, and it's kind of their marketing speech, but uh, powerful and accessible, and expressive and deep, and also very true to the characters. Uh, I we talked a little bit about, but yes, the animations look awesome, and the the combat in this game, pirate. I actually thought about you specifically because I know you're a huge like brawler fan in toy boxes and the different uh, combinations of combat abilities and and just what they showed off got me really excited because it looked like a lot of fun and there's a lot of variety in there. Yeah, it's kind of like the Incredibles um, uh, figures. They, they all have their different abilities and it's fun to play with them because uh, they all do different things. So. Uh, that's that's what you think about these Marvel characters. They all have different powers. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So uh, yeah, you can level up these characters to to twenty, and uh, I don't know. That's the characters themselves. Looks like they've been upgraded quite a bit. It's very oh. unclear if they. Um, I forgive me if we've already spoken about this, but I've been up since 3 a.m. Brain slowly <laughs> starting to <laughs> <laughs> um, That's commitment right there. It, it, it's unclear whether the original figures will... I mean, it sounds like they will be leveling up to level 20, but it's unclear whether they'll get their own skill trees. But the more we talk about it, I feel like they're going to have to have skill trees because who wants a slow, methodic... Um, 
Captain Jack running around a level. It's like when when you got the jetpack unlock in the game. Whoever walks around, you just chuck the jetpack on and and you fly. You know they're talking about clearly that was an issue because they wanted to work on the feeling of moving characters around. But that doesn't help the fact that we've got twenty some characters here that are all slow and virtually useless. Like what's what's the motivation to put your old figures on the disc? Because you clearly don't want to choose that over a character that can hover and fly and super jump. So maybe that's a hint towards the fact that we will get some form of skill tree attribute to apply to the old characters to make them interesting to use. We were we kind of hinted on it be pre-show before we went on air. Um, they kind of hinted on it during the actual presentation and they kind of shushed it. Um, <laughs> but it, like with Skylanders, if you get, let's say, a Spyro for the third generation game, he can level up to level 20. If you put him on a second gen or a, a Giants or a Spyro, he'll actually go down in levels because they have max caps. So I could totally see them. If you bring the character into 2.0, you can you upgrade and do your skill trees. But if you bring them back to to the original game, they'll go back down to their former self. Makes sense. Um. And I think you're you're pointing out something an important point there, Jason, is that you know these Disney Infinity One characters they might look a little bit dated if they don't have any uh, upgrade ability. Well, they're all so similar, particularly like the uh, the pirate uh, figures and stuff. They all pretty much do exactly the same attacks, <laughs> move at almost exactly the same speed. There's very little differentiating the characters. Um, obviously, visually they're different, but ultimately they all tend to just have a a fairly short range throwable attack mm. or a melee weapon. Yeah. The uh, <coughs> those characters, especially um, Lightning McQueen, I know when the game first came out, I, I thought eventually I'd be able to level up Lightning McQueen to get him to be Dynaco Blue Lightning McQueen or Radiator Springs Lightning McQueen. So I'd like to see um, if, if that if if D Disney Infinity 2.0 could bring that in there, or these new power discs where you can change their costumes. If I could change mm -hmm. Lightning into a Dynaco uh, Blue or or one of his other 20 different costumes they sell at the stores. <laughs> well, it would also be interesting to see how they integrate, if they integrate at all, the Cars stuff and Disney Infinity 2 outside of racetracks. Yeah, because car Cars is going to be tough because you have those, uh, those toy box... Toy box uh, game discs that they mentioned in the starter pack that once you complete it with an Avengers character it unlocks it for any character in 1.0 or 2.0 I don't see how you could do that with one of the Cars characters they might be an exception yeah, yeah I say bring on planes and boats uh, I, th I feel like we've had the Cars in the game and uh, it'd be nice to get a different, go a different direction there to get more into it I, I completely agree with that I want some planes <laughs> I really want some planes all right, gents. Well, that's uh, kind of the the uh, figure talk. Let's talk a little bit about some of the toy box changes. Uh, so one thing, one of the first things they mentioned was structured play. They there's been lots of conversations and lots of community feedback about give us something to do in the toy box, and they've handled that pretty well, I think, in, in the form of uh, having these toy box challenges. There's something to actually work for, but. These are, are scenarios and using different uh, different kind of challenges that you have to complete in, in a toy box, and then uh, yeah, doing doing that. So that was that's kind of neat. And they also had uh, so in that structured mode, they talked about this uh, dungeon the dungeon crawler, which is like a Diablo, and then a, a tower defense type game. So the tower defense one they showed off, you have a certain amount of currency that you can spend in this tower defense toy box and you have to throw these items down and use all these these specific toys that they give you access to to accomplish kind of um, a goal. So I think I think that's pretty neat. It gives it gives some people that may be kind of lost in the toy box something to focus on and, and look forward to um, and work towards. What do you guys think? I like how it's Specific those two specific game discs that came that come with the starter set that they are Avengers specific until you beat it and then it mm. breaks it up and I forget what term they said but it skirmish breaks it open mode. for any of the other toy box characters skirmish mode there you go yeah 
Yeah, so the Asgard level, they said there's ten different levels, and then after you beat those, uh, it opens up into skirmish mode. So that, that's cool. I dig that. Um, I think a lot of people out there will enjoy that, and it, uh, it provides one more additional value to the toy box once you complete a, uh, a play set. It's kind of, that to me is kind of like the talent, toy box challenges we have uh, upscaled a little bit. That's like 2.0 of the toy box challenges as far as Jack Skellington's thing where he has to kill the enemies <laughs> or the, I forget what their, the official names are called. But Oh, the adventures. The adventures, thank you. Not challenges, adventures. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that, the 2.0 version of the adventures. Well, I think they uh, also wanted to give a little more value to the starter pack because they were just including one playset. Granted, it's a massive playset, mm. but including these two four to five hour adventures that they that they have that can eventually be used by anybody would it sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. That 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 idea also is probably a good way for them to do like smaller non playsets for some of the toy box only characters that we already got. Mm. That's a good good idea there too. Uh, something else that they talked about that's a huge addition, and I know it's something the show has talked about quite a bit, is this new brush system. So now you're going to actually be able to build and customize the size and volume of, uh, yeah, of that, toy box assets. This is freaking awesome. I don't have to spend all my day building a stupid town. Yeah, you, you paint it on, and then you can also um, adjust the scale of the buildings, how many floors there are, and you don't just have these, like... Right now, it's kind of like a block system, right? You put a block down, you can stack another block, and you can move the blocks around. But this really gives you the ability to to customize the size of these items. Racetrack brush, I mean, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Ra they, they brought up racetrack, they brought up castle, and you actually can see some of the castle stuff, which is really cool, and that's new. Those are uh, different things we haven't seen before. Uh, the city said it paints buildings, it paints streets, paints paints... Uh, um, like city accessories like traffic lights and the uh, traffic lights were awesome just popping up here and there just, yeah <laughs> yep uh, something they kind of mentioned with this and I know this is something that's going to help a, a lot of people uh, especially the toy box artists that you know they take, use and spend a lot of their time making these really intricate details when that time can be spent and more uh, specific creative ways is these things that this building AI called builders they you, you drop them in the world they they look like townspeople that with like hard hats and construction workers you plop them in your world and uh, they build they proge procedurally build uh, around you and there's different types of builders there's city builders there's forest builders there's tree builders uh, this that was so cool <laughs> it really ups the accessibility and that's one thing they, they really talked about is that they don't want to make the toy box any less uh, sophisticated and robust but they do want to make it easier to, to use. So what do you think of the builders? Uh, Caesar? what do you think about, about this? Uh, I think it's, it's a really, I think it's a great idea. I'm just worried that they'll become sentient and, uh, <laughs> and take over. I'm just worried that's over. That's the one thing, but uh, no, I think it's a great idea. It's a great concept. I'm, I, I'm very frustrated because I've only played the game on the Wii, and I get, mm. I obviously get to a certain point, and I can't build anymore. Like I put like four trees down, and I'm done. And so, <clears throat> it, I'm, I'm going to be coming into a toy box that I can actually play with for the first time. And so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, excited to see that I have these other options, but I kind of want to explore it on my own for a bit. So yeah. it's, I mean, it's a great, it's a great idea. And I know, I know Jason's really happy about the brush, um, the brush altering system. Well, I think it's good. I think the builders and the brush are going to help. I mean, it would have been perfect in my one and only toy box attempt, the Neverland Racetrack, <laughs> because after I built the track, I'd go right. Well, you guys go and theme it for me. I just need trees and. <laughs> And stuff. You know what I mean? I could have just sat back with a coffee and enjoyed the show. But um, I think that's what I think that's what the pros will use it for. The pros will just use it for set dressing, because mm -hmm. you can know what they said. You can go in and alter whatever they've done or just delete it. So what's it hurt? While you're spending hours getting your perfect track layout, why wouldn't you go send out a ton of builders to start theming your track so you don't uh, 
have to do it, I guess. So I think that's really, and I think, I think they're alluding to the fact that I think it'll be quite fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I think my girls would really enjoy to say, "Oh, go and build a forest," and just seeing them work away would be quite, you know, entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, completely adds life to your toy box. I yeah. think so. I think someone in the chat room said sweatshop 2.0. Um. <laughs> Oh, they're townspeople. That's uh, that's they whistle while they work. <coughs> Pirate, you're our resident toy box artist. What do you think? Do you think these are good things, and are are they good tools that will help toy box artists? Well, I definitely uh, am thankful for my uh, featured boxes now because, and I'm good. To, I'm gonna have to try to get as many as I can before 2.0 comes out because once. Once uh, everybody has the workers that do all the work for them, <laughs> they'll never get featured again. So uh, I'm going to be submitting something in every challenge between now and 2.0 just to see if I can rack up a couple That's of That's awesome. But, uh, uh, I- two, two of the greatest things they talked about for Toy Box, I thought one of them I thought was really cool how um, Blackburn and Benaki admitted the faults of the uh, toy box and said there it wasn't perfect. It wasn't the perfect system, but we're going to make it that perfect system that everybody wants in this version. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was really cool that they admitted that. <coughs> and then the second coolest thing was the uh, the door where you can have an interior building. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. Everybody wanted that. I, if, if I had to choose uh, and rank... F- from importance of the builders, the brush system, or the interiors, I would say interiors would be ranked higher simply because it was something that was really difficult to emulate in the first version, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be crazy cool. Uh, I so yeah, so all you have to do is put put a door on a on a structure, right, and then it kind of creates an interior. Is that is that kind of the impression you guys got? Yeah, basically. <clears throat> That's what it looks like. There's, there's specific types of doors that you can use. It, it re- reminded me of, um, of like, in the Pokemon games where you could, you know, create a... You, you could dig into a cavern all of a sudden you make your own little home. Mm. Um, so. Because it was also modular. You had different different uh, sized rooms that you just kind of lock onto to the other rooms to expand on and so you could have like a square room then you could have like a rectangle room and it, it looked like you could make it uh, pretty robust. Mm-hmm. They initially talked about how you can use it as kind of like a home and you could put collectibles in there like we discussed. Trophies, yeah, they had the home <laughs> setting, yeah. Customizations. Um, some specifics I took note of that were just cool where it, they had uh, kind of Iron Man suits. They had a Captain Shield coffee table. Um, and they said you can make your own trophy room, and and that was cool. That was all I would necessarily need. But then they threw this other thing at us, and they said, you know, you can use interiors not just for home, but you can make it like dungeons. And I think, uh, as a non-toy box artist, I have a feeling the dungeon idea is what could really, really empower toy box artists to make some awesome, awesome games. Especially if you throw in some of those template creations, like a, a dungeon crawler uh, template. Yes. Well, you were talking about this when uh, when the show first started. Uh, you were making a haunted mansion uh, toy box, mm-hmm. and it's just like the haunted mansion uh, toy box piece in Disney Infinity One. It's just, <coughs> but imagine if you could put a door on that set piece and actually enter the haunted mansion. I think that's a better effect than uh, what we currently have. I totally agree. And actually, this kind of throws back to uh, a recent conversation we had just like three weeks ago when we were talking about <coughs> play sets, uh, toy play sets in the actual physical form outside oh, of Disney Infinity. And opening them up? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. So you put that door on the outside of, uh, outside of the Han Mansion, and then it kind of creates this instant interior. Um, like you talked about that, God, that's so cool. And talk about uh, talk about a good way of making dark rides. Uh, yeah, it, Agent Agent Colson rocks in the chat room is saying it would make a perfect dark ride entrance. Yeah, sorry, no, guys, I, I totally agree. So that's that's exciting. I'm a sucker for anything that is, has like player housing, but then when you guys start to talk about like a haunted mansion or or these dungeons, then I get really even more excited. <laughs> I I also wanted I also like the fact cuz I for for one reason for I can't lock the the whole logic toy and 
connecting them all, it totally loses me. I have no idea what half of them even do, let alone how to connect them properly. So the fact that you can get these Logic Toy templates mm -hmm. and like install them in your toy box, and all of a sudden all your mechanics will work, you just have to place the different components. For me, it's awesome. I can create a game or a race or something without actually having to connect all of the stuff. Granted, it, it'll... It kind of lessens, all these factors kind of lessen all the hard work some of these toy box artists have done. Mm -hmm. But I think in a general, it will raise the quality of the toy boxes for everyone because the toy box artists can just make their stuff, the, the, the experienced ones can just make their stuff that much better. So... I agree with that sentiment completely, but again, I'm, I'm not a uh, toy box artist. That, that being said, though... I, I think a lot of the tricks toy box artists use currently in their toy boxes are workarounds because they don't have other means to do it. And so if, yes, they make it kind of simplified in some respects just to make it easier, yes, it's making it easier for everyone, but then it's also providing, hopefully, it's providing features that are, are currently unavailable in, in those toy box artists' toy boxes. Uh, some some things, other things, they improvements they mentioned. Uh, we talked about earlier is like, what what is the fireworks cannons? It's a signal <laughs> that you have completed whatever you're trying to do, right? <laughs> right, right. A pretty limiting set, and so they they didn't mention more than this, but they said you are going to be able to finish these toy boxes, and hopefully, hopefully you can add some story elements. But the only they one they kind of really... they kind of mentioned fades. I believe yeah, they kind of mentioned fades. Fades That's such a new. weird one to mention, fades. I mean... Well, it's a start I mean, and an end. I mean, it's, I know, it's a defined I just, end. Do you think that means more than just fade to black and fade, you know what mm. I mean? Like, I think I think you're going to be able to include text, and that text will also be a title and kind of a, a uh, fade out finishing the end. That would make more sense. That would be, I mean, that, that alone would be nice to be able to have an opening story piece and a, and a conclusion of the story. Yeah. I'm really hoping, too, they uh, have some sort of cinematic element to it. Right now we can lock the uh, lock the camera controls, but it would be cool if we could actually uh, program the camera to, to do a certain path to create kind of cinematics. That's wishful thinking, though. <laughs> Be kind of cool. It would be. The, the best, the, definitely the best two toy boxes uh, finales that I think have ever been done so far have been um, have been Mighty Didus's Owl's uh, um, Quest, where at the very end you got to ride the uh, magic carpet with uh, Jasmine, and it it uh, mm. it was just Lauren did an excellent job on that. It it totally um, took storytelling to, to make that make that magic happen. And uh, Tyler Cole's uh, Tie Forces, um, uh, when he, uh, Rick Isley, everybody at the end, uh, <laughs> song, I thought it was a brilliant way to end a toy box. Yeah. And although uh, I think they kind of, and Caesar, just so you know, you, you had some audio there, so when you're ready to talk, just unmute yourself. Um, but another thing they kind of mentioned around the the Logic Toy story elements were online leaderboards and stat screens. So I don't know if those are those are just going to be toy box elements to uh, to include, and and so it would be cool to have leaderboards with your your toy box, and the stat screen could also that could mean like you've completed this level, and I don't know you've leveled up or something, um, not outside of the toy box leveling. So. Uh, you guys, why did they mention four-player multiplayer? Because that currently exists in the toy box now uh, for everything, unfortunately, again, but the Wii and the the PC and iPad version. So why do well, you think they... I think they might have mentioned it because they figured out a way to do it on every platform. I mean, they dropped, they dropped the Wii, and maybe they figured out how to do it on iOS and, and uh, PC. I don't know. Hmm. I'm hoping it, they accidentally said that, but what they are really wanting to say was four-player, multiplayer, and play sets. <laughs> but uh, I'm thinking it could be because they were mm -hmm. talking about the play sets at that point. They were still talking about the Avengers play set in the beginning. So, well, how else would you do a multiplayer on a play set if it, you can only have two characters per base anyway? 
you allow people from other sets to come and other platforms to come online. In online. So, so no, so yeah, so then that would that's definitely what they were talking about. Or Disney Infinity Marvel 2.0 comes with another base, and every one of the consoles has more than one USB port. Mm, two, four, four ports, so to speak, four, yeah. or two, two bases. That's a possibility, but I, I don't think so. I hope it's the latter. We want four-player online multiplayer. Yeah, in, Out, in outside the, of the toy box. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think that might have been a mistake saying that uh, aloud. I don't know. I don't necessarily know it's a mistake because, like you said, I mean, they are including the base with some starter packs. They might not. Maybe they think everyone needs two starter, two bases. So why not make four player in house? Hmm. I don't know. Um, the other thing they they mentioned. So Travis, I'm sorry, I did skip ahead without uh, going into this in a little more detail. So templates, uh, you can. There's different types of game types, and one of those they showed off was the collector game type. And so this was what a lot of the toy box adventure, or no, a, a lot of the challenges within play sets are these collector with the balloons. And so they threw down this template, and then they just added balloons. Uh, and right. So that was, it was cool to see a re, uh, actual example of that. Right. I agree. Um, they also said 80 power disk. 80 new power disc, and they did go through some of these, and so um, I'm going to mention a few, and just go ahead and feel free to, to chime in when you guys want to talk about uh, them. The one that was most interesting to me, and we, we kind of uh, briefly mentioned it with the uh, Rocky Raccoon and uh, what's his name? Uh, Groot. Groot, thank you. I knew it was GT something. Uh-huh, GT. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you have this ability to team up with characters, so you can have kind of these secondary characters that aren't playable. It looks like they they AI and they assist you, and those are power disks apparently. And, and they are circle. They are circular power disks. Awesome. What do you guys think of this? I think this is such a cool idea. Yeah, they, I love it because it's going to get more characters in the game. We don't have to wait around for artists to finish designing action figures and we can just um, perhaps get some more of those obscure figures that maybe wouldn't work terribly well <coughs> as a, um, a collectible figure, but you still want them. Like, I would, even, even though it's a fairly major character, I would imagine Tinkerbell would be a good character in that sort of context, even though Tinkerbell would be cool as an actual collectible figure as well. <laughs> but, Tinkerbell would work well in that sort of a, uh, yeah, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Any of the smaller uh, sidekicks like uh, Mushu or Miko or somebody, uh, be cool to. Yeah, I agree. Um, like Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. You could summon the genie, mm -hmm. and the genie could come and help you out. Yeah. In, in the the two Marvel ones that they talked about. Well, they talked about in the in the announcement they talked about Iron Patriot. Mm -hmm. And then they also mention they also have a power disc released for Winter Soldier. So there's two there that are Captain America specific, but since Captain America is part of the Avengers playset, they and uh, but Captain America movie just came out, so that's why you have the Winter Soldier. I'm assuming. I, I, I'm curious about the functionality. Does it work like, um, do you press a button and the guy comes out, or are they out the whole time? I, it's a great concept, and I'm really excited about that uh, Iron, uh, Winter Soldier one. Here, here's that Winter Soldier one you're talking about. Yeah, there you go. That looks okay. sweet. It's cool, because I know a lot of people love uh, the ability disc and the round disc. Um, personally, my favorite are the hexagonal, and I like the fact that these are round power discs. So they, uh, to me, they have a little bit more value than they would otherwise. I think they might be functioning as I think what Caesar said. There might be a button function because there is another one here, another round power disc that's uh, <laughs> shield helicarrier strike, and you can send down a missile strike from above. Your enemies will need to take cover. So that might be something that you lay down, have underneath your character, and then you just hit button, and you know maybe it's a rechargeable one that happens every so mm. often but you just hit a button and it sends down a, a strike. Um, so here's that one you were just talking about, Travis. Yeah, that one right there, yeah, <laughs> with Nick Fury. 
So can someone tell me, again, my brain's just not working, so could someone tell me the, this number 80, how, how does that, where does that fit as far as our existing quantity of uh, power disks? You did, is, we had 65, 67. So is that season one, uh, season, you know, series one, two, and three was 67, was it? Some 60, between 60 and 65, I, I oh, wait, wait, 67. So it's comparable. It's not less. It's not necessarily a great deal more. It's about the same. 63, something like that. Yeah. yeah they also said in the show that it was going to be two waves uh, for a total of 80. So. Oh, really? Yeah, 40, 40 discs each. Hmm. So we better be getting our complete uh, power disc uh, albums. <laughs> uh, as I say, no mention of booster packs, did they? They didn't actually show anything as far as that's concerned. They didn't, didn't show. The they didn't mechanism. show booster packs. You are correct, but I'm assuming they'll still have them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but that's what I expect. Um, actually, it's 63 total. 63. Oh, current. 63 current, current. Uh, but six of them are. Um, I'm assuming are going to show up in one of these two waves. The ones that were ju at currently just Toys R Us. So. Okay. Another thing they talked about the power disc, I know it made the show very happy, is costume changes. So yes. now you have variant costumes. And I love the fact that they are power disc and they are not new figures that you have to buy. Although sometimes the figures would be cool. Uh, I like I like this better. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Paul Paul over on uh, on uh, our Facebook page, he is a great he does a great bunch of customs. I have a mm -hmm. feeling he's gonna take these three at least these three discs that have been, you know, shown the uh, Gamma Ray Hulk, which is Gray Hulk. They have uh, the Black and White Iron Man, and then they have the Sentinel Liberty Captain America World War II costume. I have a feeling we're going to see customs from him with those. Uh, you know, to actually look what it does, what it would like it look like in the game. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that too. Those would be. I would. I would like to see that. Uh, they did mention new skies and ground textures, which was pretty obvious. We expected that. Uh, they did show off some vehicles, just to run those down. They showed off a uh, captain's motorcycle. It looked like captain's motorcycle. Um, I think it was the Hydra text. motorcycle, actually. Hydra motorcycle. Okay. You, hey, they're getting you do see him in there. You do see him riding another motorcycle, um, so it does look like his motorcycle. Okay. Yeah, there was two. Uh, it looked like the Hydra one might have been the one Nick Fury was riding on, and then the one that Captain was riding on looked more traditional, but <clears throat> those could be switched back and forth, too. Yeah, Can we could go be... back to the uh, customization disc? Because we glossed over that pretty quick. The, uh, uh, sure, the sky and ground? Yeah, they have one that's for Iron Man, and uh, the sky is supposedly the view from his mask. So picture the whole sky as uh, as you would see like in the Marvel movies with Iron Man flying around. I think that's gonna look really cool. And that then will. the terrain is supposed to be if Tony Stark designed your level of what the buildings would look like. So I'm guessing a lot of reds and <coughs> uh, that one's awesome. And then the other one is uh, is World War Hulk. So um, the sky would would turn into green and then uh, the ground would be just like Hulk destroyed everything. That right. Is, those power days are going to be awesome. They're going to be well sought after. Yeah. yeah. That looks really cool. I'm really excited to see the uh, the Stark from the suit one. Personally, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, sorry about that, uh, Steve. Thanks for no. bringing us back around, though. Um... Where are we? So thanks oh, for yeah, swinging us back around. <laughs> oh, I think Caesar wins the pun pun award for the evening. Uh, some more. You can give it. <laughs> they showed off the mini heli carrier, which is I I dug that. That was pretty cool. What do you guys think of that? That was cool, but they didn't show that as a power disc, so I don't know if that's going to be, be a power disc or if it's going to be a an unlockable. unlockable. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, they also they also didn't show the sky cycle. They didn't show that as a power disc. Mm -hmm. Or and there are multiple. The, the Nick Fury motorcycle looks like the Spidey cycle from the Spider-Man game. 
uh, uh, from the Spider-Man show. So I, I think there's multiple motorcycles and stuff. So. And they had Lola, which is uh, the red uh, the red car from um, Agents yes. of uh, Shield, which I thought it was cool how they're bringing all the Marvel properties in there, the television shows, uh, the animated series, the movies, comic books. It's mm -hmm. full circle. I think it's brilliant how they're incorporating everything. It's kind of like Disney Infinity, where they're getting Pixar and every every Disney uh, everything in the canon. Yeah, nothing's untouchable. Makes me think we might get a Agent Coulson figure. Mm, I think he might be NPC. Yeah, I, I do too. But uh, Caesar, did they ever did um, did Craig ever say anything? Because they kept asking uh, asking him if he wanted to be in Disney Infinity, and they kept cutting him off. Or uh, he really didn't say that that's the next medium he wanted to be in. I was kind of waiting for that. And. You, you uh, talk, Greg. Okay. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember what if he, what they joked about. But he said he wanted to be in Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so, so uh, I think he would be a perfect uh, mission giver. Um, but he could also couldn't he be one of these uh, team up characters? Could he be a power disc where he like assists one of the <laughs> other main characters? Takes a shot for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Pirate. It's the fact that nothing's untouchable for them, and they're even using the the TV show Agents of Shield because that car is awesome. It, it like is a sports car, like a an old sports car, but then it also has hover abilities, so that's cool. Yeah, pa uh, Patrick uh, texted me. Uh, Papa Echo texted me during the conference, and uh, he was excited that uh, Disney Infinity 2.0 was bringing in uh, the, the tradition of Disney horse or horses. <laughs> When he when they showed Asgard, he saw a horse. Oh yeah, <laughs> called it Asgardian horse. Love horses at Disney Infinity. <laughs> Jason, that made you happy, right? Because uh, horses. My, life, your... my eyes did light up at that moment. <laughs> yes, awesome. There's now are they are they new horses or can we just bring horses in from other? I mean, because horses are can pair you know, brought in from 1.0. So. Well, they're power discs, so yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pr uh, party around um, Asgard uh, with Tansu with the elephant. Um, and that was kind of it for the announcement. I mean, there's a couple things we're gonna discuss here, but that was like the meat of the content. That was all of the Marvel stuff. It was all of kind of the toy box upgrades. Uh, and it was a lot. And Jason was talking before the show. He's like, you know what? It, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but I feel content with with what they showed today. And I didn't walk out of there. Or in his <laughs> example, he he didn't wake up at 2 a.m. for now. <laughs> it was well worth the time. Do you guys kind of agree? It was a well-rounded event. Yeah. It left me excited, wanting more, but it also left me crazed. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't like the fact that it was just Marvel announced, mm -hmm. um, and they definitely are making them their points heard on on in the internet. <laughs> I yeah, have to say they they could have picked a better time to have this event because we're getting around the lull of Disney Infinity One, where there's not that many releases lo left, and what are we gonna do now? And people are we're starting to lose interest, and now it's bringing everybody back. Um, back and talking about it and I know after I don't have any series 3 power disc but after I saw that uh, this um, event it made me want to go out and make sure I have everything complete before the next one comes out yeah yeah because the fact that you can bring everything forward as far as characters or it just makes 2.0 that much better so well and it, it gives when the second one does release so first off it gives people interested in 2.0, it gives them time to kind of get introduced to, to the game and start buying stuff now, knowing it's not going to be a purchase that only lasts them a couple months. Uh, but then once it is released, it also gives the collectors, you know, the people that have gone out and got all the power disc, it gives value in that and, and hopefully those power disc will still be available online or, or in, at retail. Caesar, did you feel good after, I mean, you were there, and I'm sure it was even more. You did an awesome job again, uh, live tweeting the entire event. Did you feel like you you it was a an accomplished event? <laughs> uh, well, no, thanks for the compliment. And um, yeah, I I thought it was I thought it was great. It was a lot more than I uh, expected. Um, 
it was uh, I'm very excited for the figures. I honestly I got into Disney Infinity only for the figures. I, I there's a blog that I follow and he posted some pictures of the Mr. Incredible figure a long time ago and I was like, "Oh wow, I really want that figure." And that eventually led to the serious addiction that I have now. <laughs> but we all the, have that. Yeah, but the the one thing I just realized about this new Marvel thing is that when you play a playset, it's pretty easy to pick what figure you want to play as. And I think with this Marvel thing, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of like a, a, it's gonna be difficult picking who I'm gonna play the playset as, like because they they all seem pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't agree more. Jason, any last minute words on on the uh, the meat of the announcement? No, as as I said, I just think really I think they gave out the right about the right amount of information because I think if they have given any more, particularly about the toy box, I would have been less motivated to play the current toy boxes, and I think toy box artists would be frustrated because. They just want all the new stuff, and they've still got a little times to wait as yet. So I think it was just the perfect amount of information, had the right leaks and the right, right Easter eggs in it, but mm. I'm fully expecting a blowout, a lot more information E3. Well, they're also trying to attract a new audience, too. They're not trying to attract the Disney... Well, I mean... Uh, they are and they aren't. They're looking, they're reaching out where they're like, hey, we, we definitely want to make sure that we listen to our fans and we are including content that fans of Infinity 1 would like. But then at the same time, Avengers is huge. Uh, they're continuing the Avengers push. And so I think in some ways Avengers is more universal than Disney, at least pop culturally right now, like, like yeah. in the present day. And so I think there's value in that, and, and I do think Marvel is going to make this game blow up, which is going to be good for Disney fans, because that means we're going to be getting more Disney content, because uh, the means to do so are, are going to be there where they may not otherwise be. The last couple items uh, I really thought was cool. So they discussed that over 10 million toy boxes have been downloaded, which is absolutely insane. Uh, they talked about how they've really taken taken uh, care of listening to the community. And I know, Jason, this is something you and I spoke a lot about early, early in, in the show's life when it was just you and I in the show. And we talked about how, you know, the community engagement just wasn't really there. They weren't. They weren't really communicating. And uh, I think they're they've really taken strides to listen to the community, uh, talk back with the community, and and actually, you know, consider their customers for their products. And uh, so first off, I, I want to applaud them on that, but they've gone above and beyond. One thing they've done, and they announced it here, this is something I've never heard. I've been playing video games all my life, and it's something that I pay close attention to, and I've never heard of a game developer do this before. So they announced jobs, and it's publicly posted right now, so if you are interested in getting a job with the developers of Disney Infinity, go check this out. They, But what they're doing is actually hiring toy box artists, and uh, they are going to be people like you and I. There's members of the community that we know of that we talk about on the show that are, are applying for some of those jobs. They announced they, their first hire, Crazy by Nick, uh, Pirate, I know you talked to him a lot on the forums, and he is a, a long-standing toy box winner, and he's won a lot of toy boxes. Um, yeah, he um, he just won his. Uh, they released the Disney Parks toy boxes already for tonight, and he just won his ninth toy box uh, for his Pirates uh, of the Caribbean attraction uh, toy box that uh, he built. And uh, who knows? That might be his last one that he's allowed to submit. <laughs> <laughs> It'll allow for other people to win. Yeah. He's a ringer. So, but yeah, it, I've played it already. It's brilliant. Um, his real name is Stuart. Um, I can't wait to see uh, what he has in store for us as he works for the, the big boys. Yeah. Yeah, good luck to Stuart. Uh, good luck to anyone that, that goes out for one of these positions. I and, know Mighty uh, Jidus. I know Lauren Mighty, Mighty Jidus, another big winner. She's a. Mm -hmm. uh, She's, I believe, she's already scheduled an interview with him, so she's already passed the first step. So, 
I know she's listening. Uh, good luck, Lauren. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, I don't think there's any any more proof to show that they care about the community and that they really want this game to uh, to give back to the community and not just so they can take our money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've talked about on the show how like the devs should take notice of the toy box artists because what they can accomplish is amazing, and and this is them taking notice. <laughs> well, didn't they say that Crazy Crazy by Nick and any of these other hires are strictly going to be making free content? I believe they mentioned that. They're strictly yeah. their job is strictly for downloadable free content. That's cool. So so even though maybe they may not be as accessible and who knows. We don't know what that their agreement's going to look like, but one might assume that you they wouldn't have uh have the freedom they have now is just toy box artists that are fans of the game, but just knowing that they're still giving back to the game in the same ways that they have been is that's also community fan service right there. I for one would like to see them. Uh, uh, hopefully, they're listening to this so they can suggest it to their new bosses. Um, I would like them to become um, full-time educators and be doing a ton of Twitch streaming so that uh, anybody can clue into their streams and watch them build this free content and be asking questions live with people that clearly know how to uh, work it to its fullest. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. I'd thoroughly enjoy if I'm working away just watching a toy box being created before my eyes on something like Twitch. I think that would be super entertaining and um, you know, you'd know, you learn a lot just by watching the masters do their work. <laughs> I've Live been talking to a bunch tutorials. of these potential hires, and I think it'd be... Uh, and one of the things I've been telling them is, imagine that you could build uh, your toy boxes for Disney Infinity, and imagine if they turn that toy box meter off. How awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane. Less building power there. I mean, they would they would just go crazy. I don't see them get any sleep. They'd just build, be building toy boxes nonstop. The, the, the way the way you said it, I just I imagine like a, a switch where they could they could say, oh, we yeah. switch the toy box meter off yeah. there. And, uh, go ahead. It's red. It's now it's now it's green. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, yeah. So uh, good luck to everyone who's doing that. We can't wait to kind of see how that whole thing plays out. Again, I've never heard of anyone doing this. I've heard of community members getting hired before, but not actively. Uh, being reached out to like this is pretty awesome. So guys, that's it. I mean, we're sitting at like almost two hours here. Uh, it's a lot of content. That is Disney Infinity Marvel uh, in a nutshell. I'm sure um, we're going to hear a lot more. Will, can I just... I don't know if we talked about it, but I want to definitely highlight on it. Um, going back to a lot of people um, getting upset that Disney was not mentioned... Um, they did announce and they did specifically say that Disney stuff is coming. Yes. It's not just the teases in the trailer. They specifically said it because John John Vignacci was like, "Oh, I don't have now. I don't have to tell all the people on Twitter." Mm -hmm. um, there is going to be announcements for Disney properties, not Marvel, not Star Wars, Disney properties in the future for Disney Infinity 2.0. Yeah. So. Well, that's a great point. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. I expect, you know, today's event was a Marvel event, and like all Marvel movies, there was a stinger at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Director Fury came back online and and said, uh, "Keep your keep your uh, eyes and ears open, and we are ex going to be talking more Disney Infinity at E3." And uh, I would expect to see a lot of more Disney info at E3. Yeah, and then think of how big it's going to be at Comic Con this year. Mm -hmm. Huge. Booth. That's when they're going to give out the Agent Coulson figure. You'll see. <laughs> Great, you and I'm not going to be there. Dang it. Only if Cart Greg signs them all. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be cool. That would. And be. I just want to say before we sign off, I think I'd just like to give a big congratulations to all the uh, developers and everyone pretty much involved in Infinity because from what I saw today, I think it's a incredible feat to put out the kind of product that it looks like it's going to be. Oh, yeah. In, you know, arguably probably less than 12 months, like, or thereabouts. Like, they haven't had a huge amount of time to iterate on this, and it looks like there's been some incredible improvements and also super exciting for the future because if they 
at this amount of improvements over each version, we're going to end up with an incredible game, and it must be super exciting for them to be able to just hone their craft. And it really is like they're building a game engine rather than a game. They're like continually upgrading full-on game engine that we get to play with uh, and enjoy. And I just think it's a, an amazing effort. So well done, everyone who's had a hand in it. Amen they're, to that. They're not going to send you free stuff, Jason. I just want you to know. <laughs> all right, I'll take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. The uh, The announcement today was about an hour, and, and we have broken the announcement down in two hours. So... Uh, I think we've done a pretty pretty effective job in that. If you've enjoyed this show, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Disney Infinity TV. Check the podcast out, uh, Inside Disney Infinity, on iTunes or Stitcher Radio for all of you Android and Windows phone users. Um, also, check out all of our friends, uh, Vinyl Mission Kingdom, Pixar Post, VG Podcast, and the Disney Infinity Fans Forum. Uh, you can find all of their links on our website, InsideDisneyInfinity.com. And uh, please stop on by there, say hello. That is where we do the live streams. So thanks to everyone in the chat room tonight. It was a huge group. We've never had this many people, and the conversation was just flowing. Normally, we engage the chat a little bit more, but we have lots to cover tonight. So... Uh, but we appreciate everyone showing up for that, so thank you. And we hope to see you next week at uh, 8 p.m. on Monday evening. Travis from Vinyl Mission Kingdom, thank you so much for uh, for joining us tonight. I, I had a lot of fun. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I had a great time. It's been a long day, just like Jason said. He's probably had a longer one than I have, but it's been a long day. So. <laughs> well, thank you for... Uh, for all the hard work you, you do on uh, Vonimation Kingdom, bringing us all this info, and thanks for staying up late and talking with us. Yeah, we, yeah we, we have a great time. It, like we, we fell into Disney Infinity right before the first one launched, so this is all new to us, so bear with us on our site if uh, we seem to be following and getting a little lagged behind, but uh, we came in right before uh, the first launch, so... Uh, this is all these announcements and stuff. We're like, what are we doing? So, <laughs> well, yeah, good things to come. I'm sure we're going to see lots of info coming soon. Yeah. So, uh, Pirate Spidey. I kept calling you Steve throughout the the show. I don't know why I did that. Pirate Spidey from Disney Infinity fans. You are a moderator there. It's a great, awesome community with uh, half the people from the chat room I know are, are in there, and they're always talking. The the toy box artists have a huge great welcoming presence there. They, they're they really friendly and helpful to toy box artists. So, um, Pirate, did you have fun tonight in your Pirate outfit, or your Spidey outfit? I had a great time. Uh, I haven't worn this costume since Halloween um, 2010. So, it was good oh to be for me on that. So, it smells. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't washed it or anything. But, um, yeah, thank you for having me. It's always great to have new infinity news to talk about uh, it's, uh, it's a great show we didn't have to like come up with different uh, things to talk about we already knew what we were talking about so it was fun thank you for having me um, come visit me at the fans forums I live there uh, literally and um, yeah thanks uh, hope yeah. everyone has a good night yeah Infinite so possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've been teasing that spider-man outfit for pretty much half of our shows so it's glad to see you finally in it <laughs> Uh, I'm sure it will be a recurring character on this show, but uh, yeah, I got Just to wear please, this for please the watch uh, it. Please watch days it. of infinity, so, you know. Awesome. Oh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, go find Steve on uh, the Disney Infinity Fans Forum. Next up, we have Caesar from ActionFigureInsider.com. I got it, didn't I? Wow. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Impressive. Did you? Thank you so much. You were kind of at the event, uh, kind of representing the show, and you were live tweeting the whole thing. And I know it was a lot of hard work. I could barely keep up watching it, just like as an observer. But you're sitting here live tweeting and taking pictures. You did a fantastic job, and we really appreciate having you on the show tonight and actually getting your your uh, first person perspective of the event. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've listened to the show from almost, I'm pretty sure, the beginning. I, I really like it. I'm, I'm really into this this game that's sucked a lot of our wallets. <laughs> uh, and I'm playing it on Wii, so I, I have to deal with a lot more than you guys. Um, <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, thanks. It was really fun, and I can't wait for E3. I already signed up for the press for E3. Awesome, and and we'll definitely we'll have you on the show again. So uh, you you write for Action Figure Insider. Do you want to just give us a little rundown of what you do there, and and anything else you you might be doing? Um, yeah, I mean you can hit me up on Twitter at Geek Saber. Um, I I've been writing for uh, AFI since like 2007 or 2008. I just have a blog there, and I also write news and stuff. It's we cover toy news and stuff, but I mean this is a, this game is a clear crossover. And has crossover appeal. We have lots of Marvel fans on our side, and, and this is going to bring in a lot of Marvel fans. So, so yeah. So check us out, ActionFigureInsider.com. Um, I write under the name of Mass Avenger. Nice, <laughs> and, nice. And uh, uh, yeah, so it, you know this 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 game is really like a whole new ground for. We we cover uh, gaming news too, so this just kind of brings everything together, and uh, I'm very excited for the next phase. So. Cool. Well, yeah, you guys have a great site, so uh, everyone should definitely check out actionfigureinsider.com. Uh, right. I can't wait to see more uh, <laughs> Disney Infinity news there. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jason Haynes, uh, it is still early in the day for you, but you've been up since 2 a.m. <laughs> 3 a.m. I got up at 3 a.m. Don't make oh. out too much. Oh, okay. but yes, it is just gone Fine. 2 p.m. Yeah, so... Um, I'm I'm ready for a coffee. I haven't had one for a while, so the show went right. too long. Well, uh, you can go get your coffee again. Everyone in the chat room, thank you so much, and we can't wait to see you all and everyone who's listening uh, next week on next week's show. <laughs>show guys we're still live just so everyone knows but we're not really the show is over now um, that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun uh, Caesar again thank you so much man for joining us I can't wait to we'll be keeping in touch we'll have you on again and sure it's good to know you're coming you're going to e3 that's exciting yeah yeah I haven't been approved yet but hopefully I will be and um the criteria is pretty easy to get in, uh, and um, yeah, I'm excited. I'll be back anytime. I love I love the show. Well, thank you. We appreciate you listening. It's, uh, it was cool to actually <laughs> see you, meet you in person and stuff. We'll, we're going to have you back. And Travis Pyre, thank you guys so much for uh, coming on, as always, and, and giving us your perspective on the crazy events. It was crazy. <laughs> now you guys can get some sleep. It's two hours ahead of your time. True. So. It's now it's now May first. <laughs> <laughs> That's how decade you are. All right, gents. Well I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the broadcast now and uh, yeah, I guess we